Welcome to Toffee TV. We are here at Finch Farm to speak to Seamus Coleman. I'm going to talk to him about how the season's gone and a few other questions as well. So make sure you keep watching. This video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the app you go to for all the latest scores, stats, and transfer rumors all in the one place. To so download the app, click the link in the description. Seamus, welcome to Toffee TV. Thanks very much. Thank you very much for doing this interview. Yeah. Uh, how satisfied are you with the season and your own performances? Um, I think this season's been in, in thirds, really. You know, we started off quite well and then we had a a very disappointing period, you know, yeah. as, as everyone knows about the cup and that, and then we finished strong. So it's very hard to say how satisfied we are. Going on the last 10 games, it's been great, but overall, um, obviously the cup run is still something that, you know, stings, great, stings yeah. badly, yeah. But, um, you know, the positivity of the last, you know, couple of months has been, has been good. And me personally, I think my form goes a, along a bit with what I explained, you know, started off all right, had a, had a sticky spell, you know, that had to come through, which I always believed that I would, you know. Um, it's not been 10 years of, of highs for me, you know. There's been times, you know, my debut was against Benfica, I started off with a low, and then a week later it was Tottenham. And it's just, that's how football goes. You have good good periods and bad periods, but you can't doubt what, what you do and what you believe in. And you've got to keep coming in with the same attitude and the same work rate. And, Eventually, always these things will turn, and thankfully for me, you know, the last couple of months along with the team, it's been much better. Um, are you full recovered now from your injury? Do you yeah, feel? Yeah, no, I feel fine. Um, I feel fully recovered. Um, physically wise, I'm as good as I've been before. You know, all yeah. the all the stats show. You know, with the sports scientists nowadays, we get we get all our stats and all that show that I'm covering more ground. You know than I had done you know previous to my injury and my speeds are are up there as well but obviously it takes a while to come back to that mark, yeah, ma yeah. match sharpness and you know that just being being confident you know with what you do on the ball and whatnot but now I feel I feel fully recovered and you know I'm looking forward to to kicking on and and, and seeing where I go from here. How in terms of the season you just mentioned they're in thirds but how important <coughs> do you think that 17 day break was after Watford because we've seen to come back really strong and yourself in particular since that yeah we did and I don't think there's any magic formula to why it's 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 paid off you know the manager gave us a few days off I think some lads needed to go away and do a bit of searching themselves and realize what's been going wrong and it was mm -hmm. it was a tough period for fans and players alike you know I know fans get very disappointed by how the team are doing and get get really wound up by it but we don't well I'd like to think that we don't uh, just finish a game and go home and make a cup of tea and forget about what's gone on. Like yeah. it, it, it hurts for a few days and I think that's the way it should be. And um, no, that 17 day break was, was massive and we came back and I think we we're all under a bit of pressure at that period. We all had a lot of answers. Uh, we had to give a lot of answers for the way we've been playing. And, and thankfully, you know, we, we, we picked up that result against Cardiff. And then uh, I think going into that game at Goodison, the fans, the crowd probably could have been uh, a bit frustrated with how things have been going, but I think they took a decision as well to, to try and make good as soon a fortress again. And mm. I think the fans and the players really came together from then on in and Goodison especially has been been electric and it's been what I remember Goodison to be. And I do know that the fans uh, feed off what the players are doing on the pitch and they obviously need to see positive stuff on the pitch. But um, they've really came with us and I think that's been a massive turning point as well. It, it was since the derby, wasn't it? The, the lads, the young lads, the originals uh, decided to, to try and do something with the atmosphere and that day it was it was unbelievable. And, you know, unsurprisingly, the teams responded to that and we've been fantastic, certainly since the Liverpool game. How, what, what's it like as a player when, at Goodison in particular, when the atmosphere is electric? Does it give you that extra burst of energy it or definitely does it really does and um it, it sets it sets you up obviously we've got to give them something to shout about initially but it just gives you that extra half yard it might give you that extra bit of confidence to go in for a tackle because sometimes a tackle is all good as it needs to get yeah. the place going and 
Um, it really does, and you feel like you're going to win the game. And not only for us, it, it puts the other team on the back foot. You know, the fans are cheering, whether it's a corner kick or a throw in deep in the opposition half, they're cheering, they're getting up behind it. And it's only natural that that feeds on to the players. And it's been, it's been a massive plus, and it's something going forward we need to, to keep, keep doing. Do you like the siren? I do, I do, I really do. I'm, I'm not sure what everyone's opinion on it is, but it was before the, the Liverpool game. I, didn't, I don't think any of us knew it was going to happen, just mm. waiting in the tunnel and then you hear it. And I think it's been great and I think it's gave the fans a lift and us going out on the pitch too, it's been great. Are you frustrated now that the season's ending, given that the way we're playing? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was just saying that last week, you know, you probably don't want the season to end and I think, you know, the seventh was achievable again and that's the little things that we need to to brush up on was like, you know, going to Fulham and even going to Palace and maybe tr getting all three points in them games. That's where, you know, going in the next season, you can't really be slipping up. So we we done well enough to get that back in our hands and then we let it slip again. So we, we, we need to uh, brush up on them performances going forward. But uh, no, it's been good. The team spirit seems to be really good at the club now and th there's real togetherness with the fans and that. But in terms of the team spirit, where how do, you, how do you get it to the level it's been at? Because as a fan, over the past few years, I'm, I don't know what the dressing room's like, but it hasn't seemed to be as good as it is now. So what do you put that down to? Uh, it's, it, the, the manager and Marcel, when I've said, I touched on this early in the season, when they signed the players, whether it was by luck or whatever, but they really <laughs> signed good people, good which, luck, is, yeah. which is important. And that's something, you know, when I've been here for so long, it's something that is important to see when you see people coming to the club. Obviously, we want good players and we want them to be match winners. But you know, sometimes when when things aren't going well, you need people to roll up their sleeves and and be team players. And even when things weren't going well this season and people were frustrated, we still had a good change in room. We still tried to do the right things, and I think that's testament to the the people we signed. And I think that's why the team spirit has been so good, just the togetherness of the group. You're the last of the David Moyes era that's playing regularly now, and what's that like? I mean, you've seen quite a few managers, but. Yeah, well, I had David Moyes for such a long time, and then yeah. the way football's going, you're seeing managers come and go all the time. But um, yeah, it's it's making me feel feel old, obviously, being the last of the David Moyes signings. <laughs> but speaking on, on David Moyes, I think a lot of the way he grounded me here, how he dealt with things, is, is has had a massive impact on the rest of my career and how I see things. You know, standards are very important. You know, timekeeping and all the rest, and that's something that I've took forward in my career, so I have a lot to thank him for. So I'm glad that I got to be part of his, his management uh, time and I've took that forward into all the managers I've had since. How do you escape from football? Ped wants me to ask if you like Game of Thrones and the Avengers and stuff like that. Uh, no, do you know what? I, I tried to get into Game of Thrones. I always said I, I wouldn't because of dragons and all this <laughs> nonsense. But um, she's my me, <laughs> same as me, dragons. Uh, I gave it a go, like uh, to the disappointment of James McCarthy, because he says, "Do not." He's never watched it, but he's the same. Don't watch it don't because <laughs> full of dragons. But I have to say. Most of the change room are talking about it and say it's unbelievable. So yeah. I think I might have to give it another go, but at the minute it's not my cup of tea. But to get away from football, I've got two little girls that I go home and they, they entertain me or keep me busy for the day. So um, fo I, I, as I've always said, you know, family, then football, that's my life summed up. Superb. I'm finally talking to the Avengers. You know, you're aware of the Paul Rudd story of wearing your shirt, wearing your top oh, in your village down, and your dad yeah, having a go. I mean, what, what was that? What was that like to hear? Yeah, it was mad. Uh, it was a crazy time in, in, in the town, you know, <laughs> to, to think that, that they were on a stag do, I think, mm. in, in Killy Veggs, yeah, and uh, one of the stag party knew my dad and uh, told them to come down, and I think he was wearing my shirt and told them, you know, he can't be wearing that around here. <laughs> Only one fella can wear that around. But it was great. It was a great story. And, uh, yeah, i seen it on, on YouTube there not so long ago, yeah. But yeah. that was great, yeah. Mad, mad story. Yeah, it was a mad, mad story, story, yeah. Seamus, thank you very much You're very welcome. for taking the time no, to thank speak you. to us. Cheers. Thanks very much.